Hello, welcome to this mini-series from the MDT podcast team covering some of the more common issues encountered when working with older adults. Each session is structured around a clinical question and our aim is to help you approach the issue thinking like a geriatrician. I'm Alice O'Connor and I'm a teaching fellow in Surrey and joining me remotely are Ian Wilkinson and Joe Preston. I'm Ian Wilkinson, I'm a geriatrician working down in Surrey in Sussex. Hi, I'm Jo and I am a geriatrician in London. And this session is all about those patients who are on a million drugs. So Mr Pillai is declining most of his medications. Which ones can I stop? So as geriatricians, we get asked this kind of thing all of the time. It's what we spend a lot of our days doing. But before picking up the phone, there are five things that might help to answer this question or help us to help you answer the question more easily. So number one, is the person having difficulty taking their medications? If so, is there a reversible cause such as drowsiness or delirium? Because this can help you decide whether certain drugs need to be held temporarily or stopped for good. And are any of the drugs essential right now, such as antibiotics for an acute infection or Parkinson's meds? And in these situations, you'll need to consider giving the drug or a similar one via an alternative route. Number two, is the patient experiencing any side effects from any of their medications? And then number three, do you suspect an adverse drug allergy or an adverse drug reaction? In some cases, a drug side effect or adverse reaction may actually be causing or contributing to the presented complaint. Number four, you want to ask the person if they have expressed, if they want to change the number of medications that they're on, and if so, why? and what thoughts have they had about which ones they might want to stop. Number five, do you have a current accurate pre-admission or pre-existing drug history to work from? If you don't have the information, if that person can't give you that information, then you'll need to try and gather that from other sources through a collateral history. And that might be through a relative and a caregiver, but it might also be through their GP or their local pharmacy. If you're working in a hospital or a GP surgery, then pharmacy may be able to help you with this already. So what do we mean when we say polypharmacy? It's definitely not a chemist run by a parrot, but I've seen a few clerkings where it's been used as shorthand for too many drugs to list right now. You could say that it means being on multiple medications, but how many? Is that four? Is that 17? What's too many medications? And it varies from person to person, and it depends on lots of different factors. So there's no specific number of drugs that constitutes that constitutes polypharmacy. Older adults are likely to be on several medications. So it can be helpful to think of this in terms of appropriate and inappropriate polypharmacy. So an example of appropriate polypharmacy might be someone who's taken several drugs following a heart attack and having developed heart failure as a consequence. This person might appropriately be on seven or eight medications that they need to be on right now. Whereas somebody who is taking multiple medications that have similar actions or interactions is more likely to have something we call inappropriate polypharmacy. So, for example, if someone was on tamsulosin for prostate problems and doxazosin for hypertension, um, both are alpha blockers. So they're both going to be increasing the risk of postural hypotension and potentially causing problems. Polypharmacy becomes more problematic with increasing age due to physiological changes which affect the way the body processes drugs. We're not going to go into a huge amount of detail on this now, but feel free to pause and take a closer look at the table on this slide. The changes in physiology can be broadly div divided into those affecting absorption, distribution, metabolism and elimination of drugs by the body. The best place to start your assessment is as ever with the patient. Uh, so if at all possible, start there. Find out what their medication adherence is like normally. Do they tend to miss the odd dose? Do they stick to the same timings? Do they take their medications with food, with water, with whatever? Do they find any of their drugs difficult to take? Devices such as insulin pens or inhalers can sometimes be problematic for older people. And Sometimes people just also have problems swallowing their tablets. Are they getting side effects from their medications? These aren't always directly related to the action of the drug. 
So for example, esophageal irritation can be caused by uh, Sandoke uh, and also by bisphosphonates uh, if they're not taken correctly. Involving patients in shared decision making is really important. Um, and it also means that you're more likely to come up with a plan that they're actually able to and want to stick to in the end. Check that they understand what each medication that they're on is for. If they're well informed about the reasons that they're taking their medication, they're more likely to understand the potential risks of stopping them as well. And this means you can have a much more informed conversation about which medications to stop or potentially start. Make sure that medication changes are clearly explained in any handover of care between healthcare professionals to avoid problems like this happening again. And if you're in hospital, that includes being on discharge summary. For people who don't have capacity to be involved in this, these discussions, it's really important that you involve relatives or caregivers and make them aware of the changes that you make as well to make sure that the plan going forward is successful. It's really important to try and get an idea of what that person's goals and priorities are regarding their medications, both before and at the end of this. Now, thinking in terms of priority can be helpful when you're doing a medication review. As you work through someone's drug chart or list of repeat prescriptions, try asking yourself these questions about each drug. Firstly, is it relieving symptoms for that person currently? If so, chances are you'll want to continue it or quickly find an alternative if, it, if it's causing problems or having negative side effects. Classic examples would be painkillers or anti-sickness drugs. They might then be on medications for a condition that would quickly become symptomatic or even dangerous if the medication was stopped, if it was untreated. So examples of these would be inhalers for COPD or anticonvulsants for epilepsy. Again, you're probably going to want to continue these medications if possible. Then we get to things that are a bit more tricky. So drugs that are being given to prevent a condition from developing in the future. So if someone's got hypertension, we put them on hypertensive, antihypertensives, and maybe statins perhaps, to prevent heart disease or strokes in the next five or 10 years. Whether or not to stop these will depend on, on the severity of the condition in question, how likely it, has, it is to develop in that person's lifetime, and their understanding of this potential risk and what they can do to try and uh, balance that. Next, you come to drugs that is a bit easier, those that are not evidence-based or no longer necessary. These can usually be stopped if you're doing a polypharmacy review. So for example, um, medications like aspirin for primary prevention of ischemic heart disease or cod liver oil, um, or some herbal supplements to try and improve joint pain, don't have huge amounts of evidence behind them, so it can be stopped quite safely. Uh, medications such as vitamin D, if their vitamin D levels are now replete, or iron and their iron stores are replete, again, may well be able to be stopped fairly easily. There's a few general tips for when you're doing a medication review. Look out for clear contraindications and interactions between medications. Sometimes these will be pointed out for you by a friendly pharmacist. Um, have a think about prescribing cascades. So can you see medications that uh, people are prescribed to counteract the side effects of other medications? These are quite simply uh, groups of medications that if you're able to stop the primary medication, you may be able to stop three or four other medications as well. Don't be afraid to question other people's decision-making with regard to prescribing. They may be wrong. They may have been right at the time and the situation has changed. Uh, it may be that they didn't have the full information at the time. If you're confident that you've got the information that you need at that moment, then you should go ahead and, and, and recommend some of those changes in conjunction with the person. When people are on lots of medications, this can feel quite hard to do. Um, you sometimes don't know where to start. Hopefully some of these things will have helped you. But it's really useful to try and get in the habit of doing this every time that you're looking at a drug chart and every time you're reviewing a person. That way you're far more likely to be able to pick it up and look at those patterns of inappropriate polypharmacy much earlier on in the future. Now, it's worth giving a specific mention to anticholinergics because up to 50% of older people are on at least one drug with some anticholinergic activity. Side effects of these drugs include really common things like constipation, urinary retention, tachycardia, confusion, and drowsiness. They also have adverse effects on physical and cognitive function, so it's really important to be aware of them. 
There are lots of tools available for calculating someone's anticholinergic burden. And we'll include links to a couple of these in the, the show notes for this episode. Um, there are lots of other useful resources uh, that we've also put on this slide. And remember, you can always talk to your local pharmacist uh, if you or a patient has concerns about the polypharmacy. Um, and they're an excellent source of really good information. That's all for this session, but we've also done a full length podcast episode on polypharmacy, which you can find on our website at www.thehearingaidpodcasts.org.uk. And it's series two, episode five. The MDT and the other learning resources available on our website are free to use and they cover a wide range of topics concerning older people from pressure sores to poverty. So you can check out the rest of the mini series if you want some more bite sized learning. We hope that this episode of Help has been help. Bye. Bye.